Now, after studying this module, you will get a glimpse of the importance of the trace elements, which are actually minute samples, but are very important in the field of investigations. The various methods involved for collecting and hence preserving these trace elements which are the most important physical evidences and the problems that an investigator faces while collecting and preserving these trace evidence. Now basically the importance of these trace elements which are very minute samples in the field of forensics or investigations it came into existence in the early 20th century since then these trace evidences have been used to reconstruct the crime and actually give a detailed description of the places as well as the people involved in the crime These evidences, although they are very minute, like your fingerprints, hair samples, even blood stains, your gunshot residue, the paints, the glass and the fibers which may be man-made or which may be the natural fibers, they actually are very small but they are very important to follow the criminals. The most important thing regarding these trace elements is to collect them and hence preserve them with great care lest they get destroyed. Now if we collect them carelessly, what is going to happen? These trace elements will get contaminated and if they get contaminated, then the results will be incorrect results and as we know that it is actually a physical contact between the criminal and the victim which transfers the trace evidence so incorrect results may not lead us to an actual investigation and hence following the criminal is going to become a great difficulty now the identification and comparison of these trace elements that we collect from the crime scene with the suspect it will help us to actually follow the criminal and hence catch him red-handed trace evidence trace evidence refers to small samples of a substance in particular fingerprints fibers hairs glass fragments soils, gunshot residue, paint chips, etc. Dr. Edmund Locard, founder of the Institute of Criminalistics at the University of Lyon, France, showed their importance for the first time. He gave the famous principle known as Locard's Exchange Principle, which states that every contact leaves a trace which means that the criminal will definitely leave a trace evidence at the crime scene. Most of the crime scenes do contain trace evidence left behind by the criminal unconsciously. These evidences serve many roles during an investigation like identifying the remains at the crime scene or reconstruct a crime the presence of trace evidence is mainly dependent on the type of material to be considered as trace evidence since some particles and substances remain on the surface for a longer time. This depends on the size, shape and the amount of the particles deposited. Smaller particles persist for a longer time in comparison to larger particles. Also, Irregular surfaces such as wood collect smaller particles more readily than the smooth ones. The importance of trace evidence in the context of crime scene investigation is sometimes understated, taking a back seat to more individualized evidence such as DNA or fingerprints. Much can be learned about what happened at a scene through trace evidence such as whether an item or body 
was moved or whether someone was assaulted from behind or the side. Among the important examples of trace materials we have hairs, human and animal hair. The examination of the hairs determine whether the hair is human or animal. In case it is human hair, one can determine the racial characteristics like body area, length, root type or any artificial treatment done on the hairs. If the hair is of any animal species, then the species and breed of the animal can be determined. Fibers The fiber examination can determine whether the fiber is natural or man-made. Its source can be determined by comparing it with fibers from a known source. Natural fibers are mainly from a plant or an animal source like cotton, silk, etc. These can be detected easily by microscopy. But most of the fibers used in the garments nowadays are synthetic. Standard samples are taken for comparison with suspect samples. Fabrics Fabric examinations determine whether the suspect fabric and a known piece of fabric are same in construction for color and composition. Feathers Feather examination can determine the species of the bird after comparing with the known samples. Glass Since different types of glasses are produced in different ways, it is possible to determine the source from which the broken piece of glass used as the evidence originated. One can easily come to the conclusion whether the glass under consideration is a window glass, car windshield or a vehicle's rear and side window glass. Paint The analysis of the paint can be mechanical, physical and chemical. The exact composition of the paint, the texture, appearance, thickness and the pattern of the occurrence. Painted surfaces are everywhere and the wide variety of layered colors, lusters and types often make paint high value as evidence. For example, paint transferred when one vehicle hits another vehicle. A pedestrian or a building can be matched to potentially identify the car in question. In a property crime where a tool is used to break into a building, paint transferred to or from the tool can connect the tool to the location. Analyzing automotive paint can identify the make, model and sometimes the year of the vehicle. Fingerprints Fingerprints are actually the best evidence as fingerprints can identify the person exactly present at the crime scene. Blood samples The shape of the blood samples can actually tell as from what height they have fallen down. DNA can be extracted from blood samples obtained from the crime scene to simplify the identification process. Fluids Semen, saliva or sweat can usually be found in spatters, drops or stains. It can be fresh, coagulated or in dried form. Each form of its own particular method of collection and preservation is done. Bodily fluids such as vomit can be found at scenes involving alcohol, drugs and poisons. Cigarette bud found at the crime scene may contain dried saliva. Semen containing sperm is particularly valuable for DNA analysis. Biological evidence must be transported to the lab quickly. Bite marks Each of the 32 teeth in humans is unique due to age and wear. Bites can tell how quickly the offender subdued the victim. Bites can often be matched through dental records. Shoe prints Footprints and footwear impressions and tire impressions are examined in the same fashion. Impressions can be three-dimensional when left in snow or soft soil or they can be two-dimensional when a dirty, bloody or other impression is left on a hard surface. 
footwear impressions can lead to identification of a suspect because of the treads on the shoes that are worn down to each person's walking style. There may be accidental scratches, nicks and cuts are left on the bottom of your shoe. Tires undergo the exact same changes making them unique as well. Questioned impressions from crime scenes can be photographed, lifted or cast with dental stone to compare to suspect shoes or tires. Physical matches Comparison between two cut, broken or torn objects to determine if they were part of the same object can be done. When an object breaks, tape is torn or something is cut, two unique edges are formed. These edges can be compared by the naked eye and under high magnification to see if they fit together like puzzle pieces. If the edges fit together, they are said to physically match one another. It can then be said that the two objects were at one time a single object. Arson debris. Extractions and identifications are made using the gas chromatograph or the gas chromatograph mass spectrometer. Analysis is typically for the presence or absence of petroleum products, although other non-petroleum based accelerants may be identified. The presence of certain products can indicate that, that arson was involved. Tool marks. When a tool is made and used, tiny nicks and chips begin to form. These nicks and chips characterize its blade and edges and pick up traces of substances it can come in contact with. Tool marks can be found at breaks and enters, robberies and other crime scenes where tools were used. Wounds Wounds can often be matched to weapons, tool marks on the weapon or at least the weapon's size, shape and length. Wound pattern analysis is a special technique that often provides clues. Soil Soil is a complex mixture of material. Each soil sample has a unique mixture of vegetation, flora and fauna that has lived or does still live within it. The composition of minerals, the size and shape of sand grains and the DNA of the microbes can all be used to characterize soils. Comparison of samples can help to assess whether there is an association between materials found at a crime scene and on a suspect but the usefulness goes beyond that. Forensic geologists also provide police intelligence at an early stage of investigation. When sand, soil or rock material is recovered on a suspect, analysis can eliminate or identify areas in which to find the crime scene. Using trace evidence to search for buried items has become a vital tool for police. Soils are continuous so it's not like DNA evidence where you actually have a match. Soils can be similar or dissimilar. So DNA testing still leads the way, being the diagnostic test to link a person to an object or crime scene. But soil evidence is becoming increasingly used as supportive evidence. Plus soil can contain anything. Any trace evidence such as hair, fiber or paint fragment can also be identified and link evidence in investigations. Skin. Because skin cells are constantly shed, it is likely that the collected debris contains cell from the individual who wore the garment. These skin cells contain nuclear DNA and may have evidentiary value for DNA analysis. Minute amounts of biological material may yield sufficient quantities of DNA. Studies show that limited quantities of DNA are sufficient to obtain a profile from several polymorphic short tandem repeat loci. Thus, skin cells obtained from scrapping an item of clothing could contain sufficient DNA to potentially determine the source of the wearer by STR analysis. In a bank robbery, for example, when only masks or gloves are recovered, Cellular debris may be the only biological material available for forensic DNA analysis. 
There are many different types of evidences or unknowns found at crime scenes which are submitted to the trace unit. The trace unit can determine what the items are or make a comparison. They can determine what types of chemicals were used or determine a type of dye from the suspect's clothing. Lubricants and cosmetics can also be examined and compared. When a piece of evidence is brought to the laboratory and no other units are available to analyze it, the trace evidence unit will often receive the evidence and attempt to identify it through the use of numerous microscopic and chemical analysis. Collection of trace evidence after the location of the evidence from the crime scene is noted, the collection process for the evidence begins. There are two important precautions to be taken into account while collecting the evidence. The samples of trace materials like hair to be tested should be carefully collected and along with this, the carrier on which the material is found like the bedding, clothing should be collected. Before collecting the evidence, several methods are employed to detect the evidence that includes visual searches by oblique lighting, ultraviolet sources, lasers, etc. and by magnification. While collecting the items, one must be careful to prevent contamination and loss of evidence. For that purpose, the contact between the item to be collected as trace evidence and other people should be avoided and the investigating team should be in appropriate apparels. First, the most fragile and the evidence that will easily get destroyed are collected. Then those evidences are collected that need to be moved. The methods used for collecting should be direct and simple. The methods usually depend on the type of the evidence to be collected and also on the place or the carrier the trace is to be collected from. The tools used for the collection includes knife, tweezers, plastic containers with lids, scalpel, scissors, comb, filtered vacuum devices, ultraviolet light, etc. The following techniques are used for collecting the evidence. Picking. The evidence is separated from an item using clean forceps tweezers, scalpel, knife, etc. Lifting. An adhesive such as a tape is patted or rolled on the item, causing the trace material to stick to the tape without overloading it. The collected material is lifted and placed on either a transparent plastic sheet, a glass slide or glass petri dishes as it protects the sample from getting contaminated and can be easily removed for comparisons. But these adhesive materials should be properly preserved so as to avoid any contamination. Scrapping Tools like a clean spatula are used to remove the trace material from an item and placed on a clean paper which is immediately sealed to avoid sample loss. This is usually conducted in the laboratory to avoid the risk of contamination. Vacuum sweeping. A vacuum cleaner like a filter trap is used to collect evidence from the crime scene. The filter along with its contents are immediately packed to avoid losses. The filter, vacuum parts should be cleaned through thoroughly for other investigations. Such technique results in the collection of large amount of evidence. Combing. A clean comb or brush is used to collect evidence from hairs and fibers of the individual. The comb as well as the material collected should be packed together. Clipping Nail clipping is used to recover the trace evidence from fingernails. The fingernails are clipped using clean scissors or clippers and then packed in clean paper. Fingernails can also be scrapped for obtaining the evidence from under the fingernails. Solvent extraction. In certain cases that involve grease or oil, solvent extraction method is used to collect the evidence. Preservation and packing of the evidence and its carrier. The preservation and packing of the trace evidence and the carriers varies from material to material. 
the most important step among the preservation of the evidence is to take a photograph of all the trace evidence from criminal investigation sites while it is still in the place. All evidence packages should be sealed properly so that the samples are not tampered, contaminated or harmed as might be the case if left open. Very small and loose trace materials should be kept in unused containers like paper packets or petri dishes which are further secured in a paper bag. Large items or the carriers like the clothing, bedding etc. should be kept separately in unused packaging material. If the clothing or the bedding is wet then it should be dried quickly without exposure to either heat or sunlight. This is done in a secured area so that no evidence is either lost or contaminated. Also, an arrangement for collecting any trace evidence that falls from the carrier while drying is also made during the procedure. Certain manageable carriers or items at the crime scene that have got quite visible and firm trace evidences are documented, packaged and transported to the laboratory. If there are items or the carrier at the crime scene that bear trace materials which can be easily lost or the carrier itself cannot be transported, then they are documented and collected by an appropriate method. Some examples for collection and preservance of evidence. If there is gunshot residue on the clothing of the victim, then it is collected in a sealed paper bag to avoid contamination due to the presence of other materials. If illicit drugs are there, then they are collected and each of the drugs is sealed in a separate sterile container. The beddings, clothing, towel, etc. are taken and packed separately. Body fluids like semen, saliva, vomit, etc. are collected with tweezers, scalpel, sterile cloth squares, ultraviolet light, while blood samples are collected by blood collection kit. If there are hair and fibers available as trace materials on the crime scene, then they are collected using comb, tweezers, filtered vacuum device and then sealed in paper packets. The trace evidence remains in a secured area where a control on the access to the area is maintained to protect it from loss, damage or contamination. It is documented and kept in custody till its submission into the court. The security is the responsibility of all the persons involved in collecting, packaging, sealing, transporting and preserving the evidence. Problems that occur while collecting the evidence Mishandling the evidence or presence of certain nearby objects can contaminate the evidence by mixing of blood of the suspect and the victim. Fingerprints and DNA traces are much more vulnerable to what we call as false positives. By false positives, we mean a type of error which occurs when an analysis gives positive result or incorrect result which it should not have given. These mostly occur in drug analysis, detection and analysis of blood stains. Now, let us recapitulate in the end what we have learnt in this module. Now, what we have learnt is that the trace evidences, these are very minute samples of substances like fibres, hair, blood stains, etc. which actually give a complete description of the places as well as the people involved in the crime. Now it was Dr. Edmond Locard who gave the very famous principle known as Locard's principle of exchange which states that every contact leaves a trace and that particular trace will lead us to the actual suspect and hence the crime case can be very much easily solved. Now 
the type of evidence that we collect can be microscopic as well as macroscopic. So as a result in the forensic laboratories both macroscopic as well as microscopic analysis have to be done. Now the most important thing is that these evidences have to be protected, collected and hence preserved lest they get contaminated even before getting submitted in the court. But the most important step involved even before preserving these evidences is that a photograph of these evidence should be taken.